save the world's coral from extinction. She is doing this by cryogenically preserving coral in hopes of transplanting it back into the oceans when the coral is most at risk in the future. One reporter has described what she's doing as putting an insurance plan in place for the species. She's the only one in the world using this technique, and she was the first to create a bank of frozen coral. Coconut Island is a research facility that Mary and her rescue team work at. It is located on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. It is a great place to study coral because there is more human-related activity that affects the coral in Hawaii than anywhere else in the world. I had the honor of getting to meet Mary on Coconut Island and having a tour of the facility. It was an amazing experience that I learned a lot from. In less than 50 years, 25% of the coral reefs have been lost. Things like changes in water temperature from global warming, pollution, sedimentation, overfishing, and coral harvesting are all part of the reason why coral is facing extinction. One of the biggest things killing coral is global warming. When coral is stressed or there is a decline in light or an increase in water temperature, there are changes in the algae and coral relationship, and something called coral bleaching can happen. Coral reefs are made up of billions of skeletons from tiny creatures called polyps. They feed on algae. Coral forms the relationship between the animal polyps and the algae plants that lives on the coral. They both need clean water, just the right temperature water, and sunlight. Coral reefs have been called the most biologically diverse and productive of all habitats. They've been compared to the rainforest of the land because of their diversity and the new species still being discovered. Um, it, as long, if we didn't have all these other things that we were doing to the coral, like we're warming them, which is stressing them, right? So again, everything's driven by fossil fuels and, uh, you know, and, and the things we're putting in the atmosphere. So, and it's us, ultimately it's us. <laughs> and so we're warming the air, but then in addition, the, the really bad thing is that as we put more CO2, which is, comes from the burning of gasoline and things like that, the ocean is grabbing that CO2 and pulling it down and acting as a sink. So the coral are very resilient, and if you do things locally, they can come back. But when you're doing things on a global level, which is what's happening to coral, um, you can't fix it. I mean, there's no place in the world that coral is not suffering now. You may not realize that you're destroying years of growth when you go boating, fishing, or diving where coral lives. These fun activities are not always so fun for the coral. You may crush coral without knowing or touch the coral, making it vulnerable to diseases or death. Whole colonies can die from sudden sicknesses. Coral has already had to deal with some natural threats, but now there are all these too. If nothing is done about this, there will be a huge extinction of coral. The Coral Reef Alliance describes a coral reef as a metropolis under the sea. So remember, it doesn't matter how far away the threat is, it will eventually make its way to the coral. We must help Mary save coral. So reefs protect your homes. They provide um, nurseries and houses for millions and millions of organisms in the ocean. Um, they provide uh, uh, fish, they provide food, they provide um, entertainment and tourism and jobs for a lot of people all over the world. Um, they're a source of pharmaceuticals, you know, so they're, they're, there's already drugs that come from the reef. 
um, that they use on HIV AIDS. And, and um, so there's a lot of antibiotics that are in development now. In addition, just the, and just the amazing uniqueness and beauty of the, of the coral is, is incredible. I mean, a, an ecosystem that's one of the oldest on Earth, it's 220 million years old, it would be like taking the Roman Colosseum and, and, and allowing people to destroy it. I mean, it's important in terms of our heritage and, and how we see ourselves as humans. Sea animals are not the only thing that need coral. We need it just as much as they do. Coral is used in new medicines, creates oxygen, and purifies oceans. It is one of the most valuable resources out there. Take away the coral, and the whole ecosystem will fall apart. Coral reefs support 25% of all known marine life. So without coral, this marine life will lose their home, food source, and protection. Every marine animal is part of the reef ecosystem. So if the reef ecosystem collapses, then all the marine life will be a part of it too. Losing our reefs would mean losing a quarter of all known marine life. As one of my heroes has told me, remember to ask yourself, if not me, then who? When you're thinking about what you can do or how you can do something to change the world. We have um, the, the problems with, with the ocean outracing our ability to, 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 to do the conservation. So if we could just, you know, if we could just halt some of the problems right now for like say 10 years and allow us to catch up so that we could cryopreserve the coral really well, then we could go, I could train a lot of people all over the world and we could do this relatively quickly, and I mean like 10 years. The most important part of saving coral is um, trying to maintain our the beauty of our of, of our world. I mean, when you look at the pictures of the Earth from from space, and I, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was little. When I was serious, I wanted to be an astronaut. And so I imagine looking at Earth and, and just being an alien coming in and seeing this incredibly beautiful planet. Just how beautiful um, the, the the oceans are. I wanted to try and help maintain that as much as I can. Hard question because it's um, uh, number one. Most people, a lot of people, don't swim. They don't ever get out and see a coral reef. They don't. They don't even know that coral are alive. A, a major take-home lesson if, if in this film is that coral is alive. It's not a rock or a plant. Although, if you look at the coral, the the thing that makes them the color, they have algae that live inside of them. Um, so they are kind of like a plant. Um, but. Um, I think the, the, the biggest thing that people can do is tr to try and change their lives so they're not using fossil fuels as much. It, it's really important for our ecosystems, but not only for our ecosystems, but we're a species on the planet, right? We're like other species. And so you have to ask yourself, and I certainly ask myself this, do we have the right to wipe out a whole ecosystem with millions and millions of species? And I think that's not right. I think we need to be cognizant of uh, the animals and plants on our, on our, and our, on our planet and be a, be a good caretaker for those plants and animals. When I interviewed Mary, one of the questions I asked her was, do you think of yourself as a hero? She was very quick to say no. She described her work as a scientist as two steps forward and one step back. Is Mary Hagedorn a hero? I think you all know the answer to that.